Okay. Um, so hi everyone. My name is Lisa Mestrope and I am a graduate student, a second year graduate student in Dr. Todd Oakley's lab um, at UCSB and I am a Wrigley Summer Fellow. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, background research, my proposed research, um, and how did my proposed research at Wrigley and how did COVID affect my research and, um, and what I have done instead. Um, so I'm broadly interested in uh, how do complex traits originate in evolution. So uh, how do complex traits like vision and bioluminescence originate? Um, these complex features, they like such as uh, vision and bioluminescent uh, components, um, they are made of uh, multi parts or many components. And so in order to study the origins of a multi part trait such as bioluminescence, um, you need to break it down into its genetic components and cellular components um, and understand how and when did these individual components um, evolve and or originate and evolve. And so um, the complex trait that I'm going to be talking about today is bioluminescence and the evolution, evolutionary origins of bioluminescence in cyprinid ostracods. Um, and, and yeah. So um, a recent paper by my lab mate, Emily Lau, a fantastic paper talking about um, using bioluminescence systems to study convergent evolution. Um, she had found that bioluminescence had evolved 84 times across the tree of life in marine and terrestrial organisms. Um, and bioluminescence could either be autogenic, so a meaning that the organism itself produces the uh, bioluminescence, or it could be bacteriogenic where the organism has specialized secretory glands that house luminous um, bacteria and produce the bioluminescence. And so how is bioluminescence produced? So bioluminescence is a biochemical production of light. And so you have a luciferase gene um, and the gene facilitates the oxidation of the substrate luciferin and voila, you get light. And um, from the previous a slide showing the, the independent evolution of bioluminescence across, the, across many different taxa. Um, it doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be luciferase, it could be another photoprotein. And so a lot of different organisms use um, different biochemical uh, bioluminescent pathways. And so my research aims to understand the evolutionary origins of the light organ and bioluminescence in cyprinid ostracods. So ostracods are these really cute and tiny little crustaceans. Um, they're about the size of a sesame seed. And we hypothesize um, that the, the driver of bioluminescence um, in these in ostracods are due to uh, specialized uh, light cells, that specialized um, cell types that produce luciferase and luciferin. And so Bioluminescent ostracods emit light producing compounds from the light organ in the upper lip. So that's the upper uh, lip is actually indicated by this circle here. And um, here on the left is kind of a larger diagram of what this upper lip plan looks like. Um, and so from previous morphological and histological work, we know that there are specialized cell types in this upper lip gland that produce um, digestive enzymes or mucus enzyme as we think. And um, the cell types itself is really lo uh, large and long. So um, like these individual cell types here, they're about uh, 300 microns in length and 100 microns in width. And um, they are secretory cells and they have these little nozzles at the end that um, allow for the secretion of, of, of the secretome. And so um, in bioluminescent ostracods, uh, there is uh, there are specialized cell types that individually produce the luciferin and luciferase. So all ostracods have this light gland, uh, sorry, all ostracods have this upper lip gland, um, but only bioluminescent ostracods have these additional cell types um, that, that comprise uh, the light organ. And um, it's pointed here yellow because uh, the upper lip is yellow when there is luciferin. Um, the color of luciferin to us is, is yellow. And so the ostracod um, 
secretes the luciferin and luciferase separately, and the reaction occurs um, extracellularly outside in the water to produce uh, this beautiful uh, light reaction, bioluminescence. So what is the function of bioluminescence in ostracods? Um, bioluminescence is uh, used for defense, um, and then there are also some ostracods, um, or tropical ostracods that use bioluminescence for courtship signaling. And I'll replay this here again because it's really cool, but you have a bioluminescent ostracod here that got swallowed by a cardinal fish, and it's spewing out bioluminescence, and um, the, the cardinal fish actually uh, uh, lets the ostracod free, and the ostracod here is kind of running around, and you can see this trail here as it escapes. So it's really, really cool. Um, so, uh, a recent phylogeny uh, done by um, Jessica Goodhart and Emily Ellis, um, they have found that there is a single point of origin of bioluminescence within a um, cypridinid uh, ostracods. And so, um, the, the tips here, um, these circles indicate different uh, ostracod species. And so, the white circles here indicate non-bioluminescent ostracods and the turquoise and dark blue indicate bioluminescent ostracods. And so both of these are, uh, they have the ability to produce bioluminescence, but um, there is an additional origin here for mate signaling ostracods. Um, and so the ostracods found at Catalina are uh, Vargula sugii, which is here, and also non-bioluminescent ostracods, um, which is within Euphylomedes. And so this point of origin of bioluminescence is really important because we can understand the evolutionary changes that occur in the gene expression of the upper lip um, in, in this transition, going from non-bioluminescent ostracods to bioluminescent ostracods, and, and looking at uh, what changes in gene expression result in the origin of luciferase and luciferin-producing cell types. Um, so again, all ostracods do have uh, upper lip glands, but the bioluminescent ostracods only have these specialized luciferin, luciferous, uh, luciferase uh, cell types that comprise the, the light organ. So um, some preliminary analysis that the lab did and I've done um, found that luciferase is expressed both in the upper lip and gut. Um, this was some preliminary analysis done by a prior technician, uh, uh, Nicole Young and Leung, and um, she found she had extracted um, RNA from a dissected uh, upper lip and gut and did a simple uh, PCR and found that uh, luciferase is expressed both in the upper lip and gut in bioluminescent ostracods and Vargula sugii. Then I did an antibody staining um, with the luciferase antibody, and here is just kind of uh, get, uh, the, give you a little, a little diagram showing the orientation of um, the section that I had done. And here are the gut cells over here. And I had found that luciferase cells, which are indicated by the yellow arrow, were um, being localized to upper lip cells in the uh, upper lip and in these globular-like cells here on the right in the, in the gut. So we can kind of um, hypothesize or, or this preliminary information supports this idea that maybe the ancestral function of luciferase could have been related to digestion and that maybe luciferase cell types in the upper lip diversified from cell types in the gut. Um, so we can use phylogenetics to construct cell type trees, understand the relationship of cell types and their evolutionary origin. Um, so in the previous um, slide, we know that luciferase is expressed in the gut and in the upper lip, and now we want to understand um, the relationship of cell types both in the upper lip and gut. So we can turn to a phylogenetic methods and use gene expression states as characters to understand the phylogenetic analysis um, of, of organs and cell types and understand how and when did these individual components, such as cells, um, originate and and led to the evolution of a complex trait like bioluminescence. So this is just a, a hypothetical tree cell phylogeny for luciferase. Um, here is luciferase cell. Here are um, various gut cells. And then here is an ancestral progenitor cell that may have been digestive in some form. Um, and the, uh, the luciferase cell is closely related to uh, digestive cells. 
And just like how we, uh, we use gene trees and species trees to understand the relationship of genes and, and species to one another, um, we can use cell type trees and reconcile it with a species tree to um, understand or illustrate the uh, homologous cell types across species and, oops, sorry, and sister cell types um, within species. And so sister cell types is when uh, the cell type had originated from the ancestral progenitor cell within the species. And, um, and again, this is a, uh, this is a hypothetical uh, a tree and um, this from the preliminary analysis, um, I hypothesized that luminous cell types diversified from ancestral progenitor cells in the last common ancestor of a, uh, of a non-bioluminescent and bioluminescent ostracod. And so we think the origin of this ecological, ecologically important trait, which is bioluminescence, um, invol is involved in the origin of um, novel specialized cell types. Uh, such as luciferase and luciferin. So my research aims to address the following questions. Um, how do changes in gene expression in the upper lip correlate origin of bioluminescence in ostracods? And from which cell types did luciferase and luciferin producing cell types diversify from? And so my summer plan at the Wrigley Institute involved both the collection of bioluminescent ostracods and uh, what lab work to address uh, the following questions. And for the first question, um, I wanted to collect uh, bioluminescent uh, ostracod Vargula sugii and a non-bioluminescent ostracod and um, perform organ level transcriptome comparisons of the upper lip and gut and two other non-controversial organs um, to quantify the gene expression changes that occurred across species and, and within, within uh, species. Uh, to reveal unique patterns of, of gene sets um, that, uh, that are involved in the origin of the, this novel uh, biological structure, uh, which is the light organ. <clears throat> and so um, the second for the second question, um, I wanted to optimize a single cell dissociation protocol for a non-model system to perform downstream transcriptome sequencing of single cells. So ostracods are a non-model system um, and the single cell uh, dissociation protocols is really intricate. You, you really need to use a lot of, um, a, a lot of uh, animals and you have to take some time to optimize for the single cell protocol. And so that was gonna be my plan um, to kind of go down to the Wrigley Pier, uh, collect ostracods, take it up to the Wrigley facility and just spend time in the in the wet lab in in the lab and just try to optimize and get a uh, get viable single cells for for downstream analysis and so why the wrigley institute well um the bioluminescent ostracod vargula sugii is the only bioluminescent species found the pacific co coast of north america and the wrigley pier is the only location known to consistently have high populations um, so uh, this is a paper from uh, Kyra Postdoc, Jessica Goodhart, um, where uh, that we had found that um, uh, really the, the high abundance is, occurs uh, next to the Wrigley Pier at Wrigley Institute. And um, the blue points here refer to location where Vargula sugii were found but not cultured. And a lot of the, the, the red dots here indicate that they went out to go sample there, but but um, there was no Vargula CGA found. So um, yeah, the Wrigley Pier is amazing to do um, in my research thesis because you've, you've got copious amounts of Vargula sugii present and also non-luminescent species, um, which, is an, which would be great for as an outgroup for uh, my phylogenetic analysis. And so how do we collect bioluminescent ostracods from the Wrigley Pier? Um, we make these PVC tubes and um, we uh, put some mesh filters on the sides. We place some um, uh, bait such as chicken liver. They love chicken liver. And then we um, tie some rope to the PVC pipes. We attach about like six of them to a single line of rope and we throw it over um, the Wrigley Pier. We probably usually have about like um, eight to ten of them, uh, eight to ten lines. And so probably about six traps per, per each line. We throw it over after sunset because uh, ostracods are, are nocturnal 
and then we collect them roughly two hours after sunset to allow ostracods to accumulate. And we take the we uh, bring the ropes back up, we put it into a bucket, and we take it up to the Wrigley facility where the sea tables are set up, and we begin to sort there. So um, how did COVID-19 affect my research this summer? Well, it restricted my field and wet lab work at Catalina this summer. And so I turned to computational work and available data to work on my project. Um, so I performed a weighted gene co-expression network-based analysis to identify genes responsible for the origin of bioluminescence. Um, and it, this is an example of a weighted gene co-expression network. This diagram is from the um, from the creators uh, of the WGCNA algorithm. And essentially, each of these nodes here are genes, and the edges uh, show the correlation or co-expressed genes, and um, usually the edges are the expression values. So if you have two genes that are highly correlated, you're going to have um, a higher weight here uh, in, in the edge value in this, in this uh, WGCNA space. And so, um, some of the preliminary results. Uh, so backing up a little bit, um, prior postdoc Jessica Goodhart, uh, Gigi Minsky, an undergraduate, and Michael Droma, another undergraduate, collected um, expression profiles of uh, Vardula sugii of the upper lip of different developmental stages um, and also of, of whole Vardula sugii under different environmental conditions. And they sequenced the expression of um, uh, of, of all of those stages. And then we generated a weighted gene co-expression profile for Vargula sugii. So here is a, an, a, here is a um, network module for luciferase. The luciferase gene is actually this yellow dot here. And the red line indicate all the edges that are connected to the luciferase gene. And from some preliminary results, we found that genes involved in bioluminescence or genes uh, highly co-expressed with luciferase include toxin-like genes and mucus-like genes and uh, with peptide signals so they're presumably secreted with luciferase um, with the mucus during the the bioluminescent release and um, this could suggest that mucus is uh, venom-like and so we are also interested in elucidating genes uh, involved in the production of luciferin so enzymes that possibly modify the precursor of luciferin we still don't know what that ostracod luciferin pathway um, may look like, but by performing mass spec and functional studies, we can uh, at least get closer to identifying the genetic basis of this uh, phenotype. Um, and uh, that's it. <laughs>